Michael Johnson has had one of the most interesting careers in MMA history. The American fighter made a name for himself early on by becoming a contestant on the 12th season of The Ultimate Fighter, where he made it all the way to the finals but was unable to become The Ultimate Fighter. Regardless, he signed with the UFC and there was times where he truly looked like a number one contender with wins over Dustin Poirier, Edson Barboza, Joe Lozon, and Tony Ferguson. But whenever it seemed like he was gaining some momentum, he lose a few fights in a row and get back to where he started but then he'd return with an amazing win and everyone would jump back onto the hype that is michael johnson and for his entire career this is how it sort of played out there was moments where he looked very good and then there was moments where he simply did not so how good was michael johnson actually but first shout out to the undisputed members of my patreon they get the extra perk of a shout out before each video but even the intro members get early access and video to the keon kamara podcast and as always the money goes to charity now let's get to it michael johnson began his mma career on february 1st 2008 at the age of 27 he went eight and four on the local circuit and during that time he was trying out to become a contestant on the ultimate fighter and after a few failed attempts he finally got accepted to compete on the 12th season of the ultimate fighter so his fight to get into the house was against pablo garza and michael put on an absolutely dominant performance as he brought the fight down in both rounds and and maintain top control by throwing some vicious ground and pound. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. And he was the first pick by coach and UFC welterweight champion, George St. Pierre. In the preliminary round, Michael fought Aaron Wilkinson. This was a very competitive fight as both men had their moments on the feet and on the ground. So after two rounds, a third round was added. And this is where Michael took over as he pressed forward with punches that dropped Aaron. And after some ground and pound, Michael locked up a rear naked choke that forced the tap. In the quarterfinals, Michael fought Alex Caceres. And for the most part, Michael was controlling the action on the feet, but mostly on the ground where he was out wrestling Alex for the entire fight. By the end, Michael won by unanimous decision. Michael went on to defeat Nam Fan in the semifinals, which led to a spot at the Ultimate Fighter finale. His opponent was Jonathan Brookins. Michael looked very good in round one as he was out striking Jonathan on the feet and looked really close to finishing the fight. But he clearly blew out all his energy after being unable to get the finish. So in rounds two and three, Jonathan began to take over with takedowns and ground and pound. By the end, Jonathan won by unanimous decision. Following this defeat, Michael fought Edward Alaloto. The two went back and forth on the feet, but Michael was able to secure a couple of takedowns and do some damage with ground and pound. And once the two got back up, Edward was tired, and this led to him eating some shots that dropped him. And after some more ground and pound from Michael, the ref stepped in. Three months later, he fought Paul Sass. For the entire fight, Paul was doing his best to pull guard, and Michael was doing well in trying to avoid that. But then Paul was able to pull guard once again and get a hold of Michael and this time lock up a heel hook which eventually forced Michael to tap. After this loss, Michael fought Shane Roller. For the first two rounds, Michael was out striking and out wrestling Shane. But then in round three, Shane found success of his own by bringing the fight down, attempting a submission, and throwing some big shots from above. Regardless, it wasn't enough, so by the end, Michael won by unanimous decision. Four months later, Michael fought Tony Ferguson. This was a stand-up battle on the feet for all three rounds. And although Tony had his moments, Michael was having much more as he was able to connect with the better combinations. He was landing the more significant shots. And as the fight went on, it was clear that Michael was the fresher fighter in comparison to Tony. So by the end, Michael won by unanimous decision. Following this win, Michael fought Danny Castillo. So round one was an absolute 10-8 for Danny Castillo. He connected with a huge right hand that dropped Michael and this led to some huge shots from above as well as an arm triangle choke attempt. But Michael somehow was able to survive and in the second round, he dropped Danny with a left hand before connecting with some ground and pound the force the to step in. At UFC 155, Michael fought Miles Jury. And for the entire fight, Miles was controlling the action with takedowns and ground and pound. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. After this defeat, Michael fought Reza Madadi. This was a fun back and forth fight early on as both men had their moments on the feet and on the ground. But in rounds two and three, Reza began to take over with his grappling. And in the final round, he secured a takedown which ultimately led to the Darce choke finish. Four months later, Michael fought Joe Lozon and Michael put on an absolute masterclass of a striking 
performance in this fight as he outstruck Joe for all three rounds, which led to the unanimous decision win. At UFC 168, Michael fought Glace and Tebow. After feeling each other out on the feet in round one, Michael connected with a big left hand in round two that dropped Glace in, and after some more ground and pound, the ref stepped in. After this win, Michael fought Melvin Gillard. It definitely wasn't the most eventful fight, but Michael did enough both on the feet and on the ground to win by unanimous decision. Following this win, Michael fought Edson Barboza. Despite Edson also being an amazing striker and the fight taking place in his home of Brazil, Michael put on a sensational performance as he marched him down for the entire fight and was landing the more significant shots. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. After this win, Michael fought Benil Dariush. And for the most part, Michael was looking good on the feet as he was pressing forward and also denied all of Benil's attempts to take the fight down. But Benil also had his moments on the feet, especially with his counters. Many people believe that Michael should have been the winner of this fight, but by the end, it was Benil who won by split decision. Following this defeat, Michael fought Nate Diaz. Although Michael had his moments in this fight, especially with his leg kicks, Nate was able to take this damage and for the remainder of the fight, he was the aggressor on the feet. Credit to Michael for taking some big shots and staying in it. But by the end, Nate won by unanimous decision. Despite these two defeats, Michael headlined his first fight night card against Dustin Poirier. And despite Dustin being the favorite and having a lot of hype behind him going into this fight, Michael was able to finish him early in round one with some huge punches. At UFC 205, Michael fought Khabib Nurmagomedov. Although Michael connected with some nice punches early on, Khabib put on an absolute dominant performance as he was taking Michael down at will and destroying him on the ground with ground and pound. Michael had no answers, so in the final round, Khabib locked up a Kimura, which forced him to tap. Following this defeat, Michael fought promotional newcomer and former World Series of Fighting lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. And for some reason, this fight had a lot of hype behind it, and I don't know what it was. I, I guess they did a good job in pretending that they had a beef. And yeah, it could be because Justin was making his UFC debut, but also also, the banter between the two of them was definitely exciting people for their fight. Especially when Michael said this. I eat my shit whole. I don't fucking take piece by piece. I don't chew out nothing the whole time. I'm gonna eat you up for dinner, boy. Nope. Say nothing. So the fight went down on July 7th, 2017, and these two put on an absolute war. The two traded bombs throughout this fight, and by the end of round one, Michael looked very close to finishing Justin. But Justin survived, and although he was taking more shots in round two, the pace became too much for Michael, and after some punches and knees, Michael went down, and this forced referee Big John to step in. After this two-fight losing streak, Michael decided to go down to the featherweight division. So in his first fight, at 140 45 pounds, Michael fought Darren Elkins. Michael looked good early on as his striking looked significantly faster in this new weight class. But in round two, Darren secured a takedown and after some ground and pound, he locked up a rear naked choke that forced Michael to tap. Seven months later, Michael fought Andre Feely. This was a very close fight as Michael had the more significant moments on the feet by landing the better shots throughout all three rounds, while Andre secured a couple of takedowns and at one point, he looked very close to locking up a rare naked choke. But it wasn't enough, so by the end, Michael won by split decision. Following this win, Michael fought Artem Lobov. And Michael missed weight for this fight and was fined 20% of his fight purse. But Artem, being the GOAT, refused to take Michael's money which is a very gracious move by him in my opinion. Regardless, Artem got outstruck on the feet for most of the fight, so by the end, Michael won by unanimous decision. Michael came back five months later and fought Josh Emmett. For most of the fight, it was a standard striking battle as both men traded on the feet and had their moments, but nothing really too significant from either side until the final minute of the fight when Josh connected with a huge right hand that knocked Michael out cold. Following this defeat, Michael went back up to lightweight and fought Stevie Ray. So in rounds 1 and 2, it was a very close fight as both men were connecting with shots. But in round 3, Stevie secured a takedown and this led to ground and pound and submission attempts. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. Following this defeat, Michael fought Thiago Moises. And in round 1, Michael was looking very good as he completely outstruck Thiago. But 25 seconds into the second round, Thiago locked up an Achilles lock which forced Michael to tap. 
In February of 2021, Michael fought Clay Guida and Michael was unable to get much done on the feet. While Clay was having success with takedowns, ground and pound, and was close to locking up a rare naked choke at one point. By the end, Clay won by unanimous decision. This was Michael's most recent fight. And with him now being on a four fight losing streak, his future with the UFC does not look too bright. But he is someone who gave us some amazing MMA moments and I wish him the best for whatever he does next. So after going 19 and 17, how good was Michael Johnson actually? Like I said in the beginning of this video, Michael's career is a very interesting one. There were glimpses where it really seemed like he had the potential to become a champion. Because overall, I think he's a pretty skilled fighter. Of course, his bread and butter is his striking. His boxing is so crisp, and honestly, it was some of the best in the lightweight division at the time. He was fast and powerful. He'd connect with combos at lightning speeds. Plus, he wasn't afraid to rush in and do all of this. He would press forward and take a couple of shots, but he knew once he connected with one shot of his own, it was over. He had the perfect mix of technical striking and one shot finishes. And earlier in his career, his gas tank was actually pretty good as he was able to maintain this pace for most of the fight. And I also want to talk about his ground game because I actually think it's kind of underrated. No, he's definitely not the greatest grappler out there, but he had some moments on the ground that definitely impressed me. He would take down the fight more often and while there, he would unleash his vicious ground and pound. And yes, the power that he has on the feet definitely transforms translates well on the ground. And even earlier in his career, he would finish fights by submission. But notice how I say his cardio was good and his ground game was pretty decent back in the day. Because if I was to compare it to today, it's night and day. As his career went on, I think Michael really began to fall in love with striking compared to grappling. And this is something we've seen with many fighters before who would grapple more earlier on in their careers. But once they win a few fights with their striking, they begin to rely on that more instead of bringing the fight down. And for Michael, I think this was a bad move because I definitely could have seen him improved on his ground game. Maybe not so much his offense, but certainly his defense. A lot of his defeats occurred because he'd get taken down or submitted. And then he also had a lot of defeats occur because he got too tired. And not so much that he got too tired, but more so his opponent was able to outlast him. And to be honest, I contribute more of that towards him becoming older. Michael did kind of enter the sport at an old age, so his prime in the UFC was limited. So for him to find the success that he's had is very impressive. The problem was that he was just never able to get over the hump, even though there was many times where it looked like he was going to do so. He would go on to lose fights that he really should have won, and had he came out as the victor in those matchups, then the narrative of his career would have been very different. But like I said, the lack of his evolution as a fighter really hurt his career trajectory. Regardless if it was win or lose, he's given us so many memorable moments. That's why I would say he was one of the best gatekeepers of all time. He was never able to build enough momentum in order to be become a champion, but he was always a tough fight for anyone because he had the skills and was also able to end it all with one shot. That's why I would give his MMA career an 8 out of 10. His career was so up and down that even giving a score was difficult. And it wasn't just his career as a whole, but it was also some of his fights as he would have his moments before ultimately losing. And I know calling someone a gatekeeper doesn't sound like the greatest thing, but to do it at the highest level of MMA against some of the biggest names is very impressive. Plus, gatekeepers help the sport by building up stars. Because now we have fighters like Khabib Nurmagomedov, Nate Diaz, Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson, and Dustin Poirier, who are huge stars today. And that all began because of a fight with Michael Johnson. My name is Keon, and this is my take on Michael the Menace Johnson. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below, because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you in my next one.